Well, hello everyone. If you are new to the channel, welcome. I hope you enjoy this video and all the other videos on this channel. And if you are a returning viewer, whether you're a subscriber or not subscriber, welcome back. This video is pretty much going to be a mix of reviews and a journal of my trip to Manua Kea, which is a world famous astronomical site in the big island of Hawaii. I was able to go there. I was able to observe the night sky in almost perfect atmosphere, atmospheric conditions and zero light pollution. It was utterly amazing. But I want to share my experience going there so that when you decide to go to a dark site, you will be better prepared than I was. I have some uh, videos of me going up in altitude, at least describing how I felt going up in altitude because at the height, at the top of the mountain is 13, about 13,000 feet above sea level. Although the amateur astronomer, astronomers and people who are just interested in observing under the night sky have can't stay at the top or at least the summit of the mountain because that's where all the astronomical telescopes are and the astronomers do not want to be bothered. So they, everyone else has to go to at least 12,000 feet, at least that's where I was, and then observe under the night sky. But because the mountain has good atmospheric conditions, it's not really that much of a difference. So that will be at the end of the video. And I will also show some pictures that I was able to take with my DSLR camera. Now, I had basically four pieces of equipment with me. I had my own eyes, I had my cell phone, I had my DSLR camera, which was the EOS Rebel T71. You notice I did not have a wide angle lens. That was a mistake. I also didn't have a tripod. That was also a mistake. But I was able to work around it and I was able to at least take some decent pictures. But I will hold that for the review. And I also had my Fujinon 7x50 TM, I mean FMT SX field 70 degrees 30. Now, I will say this. When going to a dark site, at least if you're traveling the one and you're unable to take the equipment that you're that you're familiar with, it pays to have equipment that you can basically travel with. In this case, as I mentioned previously, I had all these options. And what I can say is, under a dark site, at least in my experience, and I wasn't very prepared, this was worthless. My cell phone was worthless. The group that I was with, people were trying to take images with their cell phone. It wasn't working. So I was, though this was pretty much worthless. Your eyes were amazing. You can see, for example, if let's say you're in a place that has high light pollution, a lot of the star clusters and galaxies and the Milky Way, you you are able to see with your own eyes. You can you can distinguish star clusters, you can distinguish the Milky Way, you can distinguish galaxies, you will be able to see some of them with your own eyes. So if you, if you, even if you're not able to take equipment to a dark, dark site, your eyes are basically good enough. The DSLR camera. Now you are able to take good images with the DSLR camera. You just need the lens to be able to do it. Even this lens, the lens that comes with the camera 
is sufficient. So you don't need to take thousand, pay thousands of dollars if you can't afford it for different types of lenses if you want to go out and take pictures of the night nice sky with your DSLR camera. Now you will need a tripod because you have to, you have, it has to be able to gather enough light by using a high aperture, long exposure frame, and to be able to gather enough light to take a good image. But you will be limited, your field of view will be limited with the basic lens that it comes with. But if you have a tripod, you'll be able to actually target where you want to take the picture and still be able to get a good image. It's just that your field of view will be extremely limited with the basic lens that the camera comes with. But you are able to take good images. Just remember to take to bring a tripod that is portable and you'll be able to take good images with this. Now, the star of the show, the star of my dark, uh, dark side trip, binoculars you do not need a telescope any telescope really if you want to do visual astronomy i was able to see star clusters up close i was able to see a moon of jupiter because whether you have a telescope or you have binoculars if you look at jupiter with your with a telescope, the moon, the Galilean moons of Jupiter will just appear as stars anyway. Now with binoculars, I was only able to see one moon of Jupiter, but it was a star and I was able to see it. Now you will not be able to see the planets up close, like as you would through a telescope, but you can see planets in areas with highlight pollution anyway. So it's really, you wouldn't really go to a dark site to observe planets because you can you can see planets basically from your house from your own city and you wouldn't travel to a dark site to observe planets at least i wouldn't so i was able basically i was a you can i was able to see all the astronomical objects in the night sky with my pair of binoculars i was able to see them up close they were better than when i observed them in areas of high light pollution. And so, if I had to do it all over again, let's say using the knowledge that I know now, what would I take with me to a dark site? I would take a pair of binoculars. I necessarily wouldn't take a telescope, especially my F8s or F11s. If I'm flying, now if I'm driving, even if I'm driving, I don't know if I would take my F F11. I'd probably take my F5 if I'm going to do astrophotography. I can use that for astrophotography because I can use this for visual. This was pretty much all I needed. I was quite satisfied. When I was able to see a moon in Jupiter with my pair of binoculars at a dark site, I was quite pleased. I was quite surprised and I was quite pleased. And so I would definitely take a pair of binoculars with me if you're going to a, to a dark site and you're just interested in visual astronomy. I would take my DSLR camera, but next time I would probably get a wide angle lens so I can have a larger field of view. And I would take or bring a portable tripod so I'll be able to take so I can take pictures and be able to take long exposures so I can get good images so basically what I would take again is my pair of binoculars for visual astronomy to observing galaxies and star clusters nebulas I would use my pair of binoculars for that. I wouldn't necessarily bring a telescope if I had to travel long distances. Now, if I'm local and I'm driving, then I would just take, and I'm going to a dark site, then I would just take my FA. So an example would be, yes, sorry, Tara.
So I wouldn't take my next star. I would simply take this this telescope. Nice and small and portable. Because as I as I keep mentioning in my videos, if it's cumbersome, if a telescope is too cumbersome for you to travel with, it's not going to be used. So if I travel, I want to remain light, flexible be able to basically put it in luggage or if you act as its own luggage and I don't have to haul it around. So you want to remain as light and flexible as possible. And therefore, that's basically what I would take. And if you ever get the opportunity to observe the night sky with zero light pollution, I would do so. And you don't need large telescopes with large apertures in order to see these astronomical objects in all their beauty. Now, it might make them more might make them more detailed by using telescopes with large apertures. But the larger apertures oftentimes are much more cumbersome, heavy, difficult to travel with. And therefore, if you're flying to a location like I did, or you're driving to a location, that's a lot of stuff you have to carry around. And therefore, and and therefore, you might not use it, you might not want to carry it around. And at a dark site, you really don't need it. Your eyes, you can point them out in the night, and you can point objects out with your eyes. Binoculars are more than efficient. They're not, they're light easy to travel with, basically, able to put this, in, put this in my bag, and I was able to see the astronomical objects that I would have to, to struggle with in areas with higher levels of light pollution. And so therefore, if you ever get the chance to go to my new Ikea, I will take advantage of the opportunity. And I hope that these reviews have been helpful I hope that you get the chance to go to a dark site and I will see you again. So right now I'm about 9,000 feet up on Anuakea and the goal is to get acclimated to the altitude final altitude I'm supposed to be at will be at 13,000 although the actual stargazing will be down at 12,000 or 12,000 due to the astronomers at 13,000 being able to observe in in zero light pollution because of cars phones and so therefore I'll be doing the observing at 12,000 feet. So I'm really excited about this. Um, a goal of mine has been to get to an area with relatively zero light pollution. And I'm excited about being able to at least try to take some good pictures with my bootleg equipment. I know this is not the ideal circumstance, but I can find places in on the mainland with my equipment and I can do it from there but to get get to a place which hopefully will be zero light pollution is rather exciting so I should be able to at least take some decent pictures uh, with my bootleg equipment so I'll talk to you in a bit okay so if you hear me panting it's because I am now 13,000 feet up I made it to yeah, I'm high enough. Maybe it's, I'm not going to say the summit because the summit's actually oh, uh, a few, a couple of feet, a couple of feet over. But I made it to the top and I am cold, but I am really looking forward to, to stargazing 
because it will be full oh, the light pollution. It won't be any light pollution. Because you can see atmosphere. And then I will show you cloud cover. And I don't know if you can see in the distance, but that is Maui. So I will uh, I'm not gonna be able to update you once the once the sun goes down, but I hopefully will have pictures. So I'll see you when, again when I get back to the bottom. Okay, so those were some videos of my ascent going up the mountain because you can drive up there, although you do need a four-wheel drive in order to make it to the summit in Hawaii. And that was done intentionally to control the traffic going up to the top of the mountain. And you have to rest to adjust to the altitude to avoid altitude sickness. Now, this last image is a picture from my DSLR camera. Now, it's not the best image, simply because, I, as I mentioned previously, I have a tripod. And therefore, I basically had to be the tripod, which mean, means I had to steady myself as I possibly could so that I could get a long exposure. And so you might see, you will see some star trails because I'm human. I can't turn myself into a statue, but it was a good lesson in using or doing astrophotography with a DSLR because I normally do my astrophotography with my telescopes. And so this was a good practice to learn more about astrophotography using my DSLR and using that knowledge to, and a, to, well, I said, using that knowledge to apply it to my telescope and using the camera so I can now go to dark sites without having to lug my equipment around. So I hope you find this image interesting and I will see you again.